Okay, so tell me a little bit about what the Washington State Budget and Policy Center is and how did it get started? The Washington State Budget and Policy Center is a research and policy organization that focuses on trying to advance progressive policies at the state level. So basically we help pass legislation that seeks to ensure that everyone in the state has access to opportunity and to economic dignity. Um, our work is especially rooted in trying to fix our state's upside down tax code. And what I mean by that is that we have the most inequitable tax code in the country in which people with the lowest incomes are expected to pay the highest share of taxes, or excuse me, are expected to pay the highest percentage of taxes as a share of income, while people who are ultra wealthy pay the lowest percentage of taxes as a share of income. And we're also really rooted in trying to ensure that the state budget is investing in what communities actually need and that the budget is advancing racial equity. And um, I know this might sound a little wonky to your audience, but to give you some examples of what this has looked like in practice in recent years, we have passed the Working Families Tax Credit in Washington State and the Capital Gains Tax in Washington State. We did that in partnership with a whole host of other organizations. And the Working Families Tax Credit is a credit at the state level for people with low incomes to get up to $1,200 in cash to use however they need annually. And the capital gains tax is a tax on the massive profits that ultra wealthy people make when they sell, when they sell high end stocks and bonds. And the money that we get from the tax will be going to support really critical funding for early learning programs throughout our state. Um, and then some policies that we're really gonna be focusing on in this next legislative session, which will start in early 2023, are a guaranteed basic income, and unemployment insurance for undocumented workers and a wealth tax on billionaires. And then in terms of how our organization got started, we were founded in 2006 by a small group of really passionate uh, policy experts, social justice activists and community leaders who saw a need in our state for a nonpartisan organization that could publish research analysis and data to really make the case for why we need to fix our state budget and tax code. Their thinking was really that we need to be moving toward becoming a state that people not only, ex not only don't experience poverty in Washington state, but that everybody has the opportunity to thrive and prosper. And then we're one of more than 40 such organizations in the country. We, are in, we work in partnership with the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities in Washington, DC and uh, the other state organizations are doing very similar work around the nation to try to create a better state, to create better states for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. if I could just like get into some of the things that you guys do at the Washington State Budget and Policy Center. So like, what do you guys do um, generally? We publish research and analysis and release communications and are deeply involved in advocacy and coalition building in order to pass policies that advance economic justice in our state. Um, and so what that means is throughout the year, but especially during legislative session, we are releasing fact sheets, graphics, briefs, reports, um, social media, campaigns, trying to get published in the media, doing all sorts of work behind the scenes to really try to make sure that lawmakers and other decision makers really have a good understanding of why we need to pass these progressive policies. Um, and we also stay busy during legislative session working to testify in Olympia and send out action items for folks, send out legislative updates, and really try to make sure that people on the ground have all the information that they need to make the case for passing these progressive policies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. So how do you go about addressing some of the in inequities that, you know, BIPOC, people with, dis people with disabilities and other groups face 
whether that's, you know, things related to education, the environment, you know, like what kinds of strategies and tools do you use to tackle those issues? Internally, as an organization, we spend a lot of time digging into the ways that we can do better for one another and for our partners to really work to create a better and more equitable world for everyone. Um, so that means we're often digging into the meat of what it will really take to dismantle white supremacy, what it will really take to dismantle ableist systems. Um, and we talk about how to do that within our organization and externally. At the policy level, that means we're really strategically focused on policies that are rooted in the actual needs of a wide range of communities. And we prioritize policies that are working to undo systemic inequities. Um, a couple of the policies that I mentioned earlier, like the capital gains tax and the working families tax credit, are two examples of policies that will really meaningfully make a difference in the lives of Black, Indigenous, and people of color, people with disabilities, people with low incomes, and other communities who have long been harmed by our state budget and tax code. And with the Working Families Tax Credit in particular, we're especially proud of the fact that we were one of the first states in the country to pass that kind of state tax credit that very intentionally includes undocumented workers because the coalition behind it really recognized that undocumented workers are obviously contributing so much to our communities and they're being unfairly excluded from so many federal support programs. And as well as during that time, they were being excluded from so many stimulus programs. Um, it is important to note though, that we still have a long way to go and a lot of learning to do. And as a white led organization, we really recognize that we have long been um, complicit in being part of a system that really works closely with the legislature that has founded so many policies over the years that are really rooted in racist and, and ableist systems. And, but we're really working to undo the harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, are, are you guys partnering with any uh, stakeholders in your efforts? Um, if so, who, who do you partner with? Well, we get to partner with so many cool people. We're really lucky that way. And our work wouldn't be possible without so many different partner organizations and stakeholders that are working hard on the ground to make our state a better, just, more equitable place. So we work with a range of organizations that are direct service providers, that are labor unions, that are advocacy organizations, um, organizations that support immigrant workers and everything in between to really try to make sure that we're partnering to pass the policies that I've, I've been talking about. Um, some of our closest partners are organizations like Moms Rising, the Statewide Poverty Action Network, Children's Alliance, and One America, but there's way too many to list. Our, and our board members represent a wide range of organizations around the state, including um, higher education institutions, nonprofits, and small businesses. And then we also work closely with lawmakers and elected officials and community leaders and advocates. Um, and then, you know, it's also worth mentioning that as an organization that's part of the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities National Partnership, we do get to work with a number, a number of national organizations on some federal policies that have a real strong impact at the state level. So right now we're involved in working with some national partners to try to ensure that the child tax credit expansion is reinstated and the child tax credit was a program that was really powerful in lifting so many or it is a program that is really powerful in lifting so many people out of poverty in particular children and the expansion during the pandemic had a huge positive impact and we want to keep it in place mm -hmm. yeah so like if um my last question is how do you go about creating an inclusive and welcoming environment for everyone you know with like people with disabilities, BIPOC individuals, like you said, because I know there's a lot of, you know, stigma around like ableism and, and just kind of like bad uh, negative, just there's like stigma around, you know, disability and other stuff. So I'm wondering, like, how do you guys as an organization tackle that? 
Sure. Um, well, I think that that starts at the individual level and we get to work with a really amazing team of people at the Budget and Policy Center who have a lot of care and respect for one another and have a really deep recognition that we all have different lived experiences. Um, and in the past few years in particular, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, okay. And in the past few years in particular, as we've all really bonded while grappling with the new realities of living in a pandemic, and we've done a lot of powerful work on our own and with an anti-racist organization called Holistic Resistance, we've moved in a direction of really trying to put relationships first and having an intersectional lens in everything that we do. We recognize that we're all here at this organization because we have a shared motivation to create a better state. But, you know, it, if we aren't creating a culture that's welcoming and inclusive and really allowing everybody to show up in ways that feel authentic to their true selves and to their lived experiences, then we can't do our work. And our work isn't as important if we aren't really showing up in ways that feel um, loving essentially. And so we create a lot of spaces for connection and bonding and really try to make sure that folks feel comfortable having whatever experiences that they need to, especially in the past couple of years, as we know that mental health has been a real challenge for all of us. We wanna be able to ensure that people are taking care of themselves, can sign off to meetings if they need to, can turn off their cameras if they need to, can take the time that they need to take off to really take care <laughs> of themselves and whatever their needs are. Um, and, you know, then it also doesn't hurt that we all really like to make each other laugh and experience joy and center joy with one another. And so um, we can be pretty goofy together, which I think sometimes can be surprising for people to hear that a bunch of policy nerds like to, to goof off, but we do. And it really creates a, a much more inclusive environment for all of us. And I feel incredibly grateful to work with the people that I get to work with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's important. Absolutely.